Apex Legends is a game that gives you very useful tools to traverse the map and engage in fights in thousands of different ways using these tools for movement. Today, we're going to help you learn how to get better at movement by discussing the three basic tools for you to manipulate the various environments to your advantage. Climbing, sliding, and crouching. Before we start, this is part two of my movement guide series. If you haven't watched part one, be sure to go check it out here in the top right or go ahead and look in the description or the pinned comment. First off, Climbing, sliding, and crouching are the three most important and basic parts of movement, and they are universal everywhere across the map and in every environment. Asu put it very well in his movement guide. Picture the map like Mirror's Edge, and think about the various walls, edges, and pieces of the environment you can utilize for your advantage. Climbing lets you utilize the dense and compact environments throughout the various maps to your advantage to take and pressure unique angles. Sliding is an important tool for keeping your speed up, especially downhill, and slide jumping is a core mechanic of Apex Legends. Crouching is useful for hitbox manipulation, and understanding how to crouch to throw off your enemies and properly hide or enter a slide is critical. Let's talk about each of these more in depth, starting with climbing. Climbing is a very versatile tool that can be used just about anywhere in the map. If you're not somewhere where you can climb, you're probably out in the open. Climbing lets you break line of sight of enemies and reposition yourself to high grounds or different areas of the map. You typically want to try and picture all the things you can climb on and understand your climb height. So you can look at the different areas of the map and think, I can climb up that, or I can possibly get a vantage point from up there. Climbing is relatively simple. All you have to do is approach a wall or object and hold your forward or sideways input midair and your character will begin to climb it. Once you begin to climb the wall, you'll stay on the wall even if you let go of all of your inputs. However, you'll start to slide down and will be kicked off if you get too close to the ground or you're on the wall for too long. Once you're on the wall, pressing any input will move you in that direction, but pressing backwards will make you fall off the wall. Holding forward will push you forward and stick you to the wall. This allows you to climb around corners when mixed with a sideways input. Holding only a sideways input initiates what is called wall running. I'll go over this more extensively in a future video that covers wall bouncing, but this is still a very useful tool to learn now. On controller, I actually find it's more difficult to initiate a wall run unless you're looking at the wall like this and then start running into it. So you want to keep that in mind if you're trying to wall run on controller. It's just easier to get an angle when you're facing the wall like this. Climbing is also a useful tool for breaking line of sight. As line of sight is not only dictated vertically, but it's also dictated horizontally. If someone was climbing onto this wall above me, they could drop down onto an enemy right here that was unsuspecting. You can see in this clip here by Quake V, now known as Michu, that you can do this around doors to snap unsuspecting enemies' ankles. Your climb height is also directly affected by your movement speed. It's very marginal, but there are a few areas where this really matters, such as this ledge in the firing range and this wall in artillery. There is actually a cooldown for how often you can climb an object. This doesn't really matter, but in some situations when you're falling off the map, you can actually chain this cooldown together to stay up for longer. You can see in this clip here, I'm falling off the map with no fuel on Valkyrie, but I managed to stall by repeatedly climbing over and over again to get enough fuel to fly back on the map. Also, as a final note, you cannot enter a wall climb while holding crouch. I wanted to show these two clips here to give examples of kind of insane rollouts you can do with climbing. These are really complicated rollouts, but and there are a lot more simpler ones you can do, but you can definitely use climbing to your advantage to take really odd positions and really weird angles that people won't expect you from. And this can single-handedly just win you fights going on a flank like this. These two clips I show really highlight the strength of learning how to climb and learning the rollouts for it. Just make sure you're holding W and you'll stick basically to the wall that you're trying to climb to. And this is really useful when, for example, the zone prevents you from going up the zip line or going up the main way to actually go through, or a team's actually watching it and you can catch them all by surprise.
Sliding is a core catalyst to understanding speed. It gives a large burst of speed upon initiating, and when combined with a jump, it maintains the velocity. Slide jumping, as I'm sure you're familiar with, is a basic mechanic to move around the map faster. It is very important to know that there is a cooldown between when you can initiate slides. Breaking this cooldown typically is what causes dead slides. That, and on top of bullet slow and server discrepancy. You can initiate a crouch slide two ways typically. You can sprint for at least 150 milliseconds before inputting a crouch command. Doing this allows you to do quick slide outs if you aren't affected by the current cooldown. This quick timing for sliding allows you to instantly gain a burst of speed after a climb. Whenever you climb a ledge, no matter how small, you can initiate a slide in that direction and gain a burst of speed to quickly throw off enemies. Additionally, you can slide in any direction using the second method. If you jump, and input a direction. When you land, you will initiate a slide. Finally, sliding also gives you a boost to your acceleration when you hit a ledge. This allows you to keep up higher speeds across various terrains, and this works on any possible ledge you can think of. Chaining these together, especially as Horizon, can make you go at insanely fast speeds. Crouching is a big part of movement for hitbox manipulation, but a lot of people don't understand how to actually manipulate the way their character moves with crouching and how first person view varies from third person. Here, we can see that even in the same spot, I can't see over the ledge in first person, yet when I go over to third person, it's clear that I actually stick out from cover, making me susceptible to enemies. Even then, a lot of people look straight down to make their character smaller, but in actuality, this does very much to nothing. There is a much better way to do this, however. If you have your gun out and press crouch, and then strafe or walk in a direction, your character tucks into their legs, making your hitbox smaller and letting you hide behind smaller cover than you normally would be able to. Keep this in mind in areas for when you're trying to hide behind a box that's actually smaller than you. That's all I have for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm sorry we haven't really gotten into the nitty gritty and more flashier things about movement, such as tap strafing and super gliding, but I want to build a strong basis to help you guys understand what you should be doing with movement and kind of the basic mechanics of it. So you will eventually become better than these players that just kind of super glide or use movement without any idea of what they're doing. Our next video is going to be our first dive more so into actual tech itself. Uh, we're going to be going over strafing and lurching, which it will be a guide that's focused both on PC and console. You obviously can't lurch on console, but we'll be talking about strafing and how to use it. And you can still integrate that into your console play. So be sure to stay tuned for that. And I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys in a future video. Goodbye.